everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is October 16th, 2016. Last night, I was a special guest on the Front Porch Radio Show on iHeartRadio. And ladies and gentlemen, they are trying to silence me. They do not want the truth to come out about Planet X. But I am delivering the truth. So stay tuned and listen to the broadcast. This will be a series of videos, so watch them all. Behind the Earth. Now, is that the Which same? Means, is that the same video? Because uh, didn't BP Earth Watch kind of do a video of that as well? Exactly. Or, yeah. Okay. We're on the same page. So when that first burst came in, it moved in, and it literally collapsed our magnetosphere, and that only tells us one thing. That was a highly magnetized burst of energy, which means it had more power and it totally collapsed our magnetosphere. And it left the Earth completely vulnerable to all of the solar winds coming from the sun. Now, within, I think, about two hours, our magnetosphere healed itself because this big energetic anomaly moved back. It meant, when I mean back, I mean back into outer space, not towards the sun, but backwards out into space. Now, we don't know exactly what it is, but, you know, really, there's only a couple of things that can actually create that type of scenario, and that would be a highly magnetic planet, a very large star, or the solar winds got around the shield and they were sucked back in, but that did not happen because all of the all of the energy that was in front of the Earth was very low, very very low, almost non-existent. So that was not the case. Now, as this form of energy moved away from the Earth, our magnetosphere came back and healed itself. Thank God, because when we are exposed like that, we are exposed to massive amounts of radiation and heat. And this heat has the ability to heat the, the Earth's inner core, all of our oceans, our atmosphere very rapidly. This can cause massive earthquakes instantaneously because we are already unstable. If you've noticed over the last few weeks, we are having earthquakes all over the place. Well, that we kinda, are having volcanoes. Yeah, that kind of leads me. To, let me let me run this up your flagpole and see if you'll salute it. You know, uh, last couple of weeks we've been hearing about how the authorities are warning the people, say in California, all the way up through the West Coast, that within 30 days prepare for an imminent earthquake. Now, you know, we don't know when earthquakes are going to hit. So, you know, could this could this could they have been seeing that this thing was coming and that's why they warned about that significant earthquake in California? Um, it, it's a possibility because I know they're monitoring, um, they're monitoring everything. And when we were having these bursts of earthquakes a few weeks ago, we were monitoring it. And what we found, and this is something that I, I don't like, we found that the USGS was downplaying the magnitude of the earthquakes on the west coast of the United States, including Alaska. Mm -hmm. How do we know this? Well, number one, number one, I have my own earthquake applications for my computer. I also collaborate with other people who do the same thing. We also keep track of these these earthquakes with sev several other seismic offices around the world. They were all saying the same thing. So how can we have a magnitude 4.2 earthquake in, you know, say Northern California and the USGS says, oh, it was only a 2.9. So they were downplaying it and they continued to do that for the better part of 10 days. Wow. Yeah. So with these these waves of energy that are 
uh, basically dilapidating our, our force field around the earth. Is this something that's going to continue, or is this just a single event? Do we know where it's coming from? Well, that's the thing. Um, after the first event on the night of the 13th going into the 14th, that was pretty stunning. And once the magnetosphere killed itself very quickly, okay, so we just kept on monitoring. And then bingo, almost at the precise same time, the next day, it did it again. And this time, it was pretty crushing because it came in, it came in fast. The energy that was behind us was very intense. Once again, the energy that was in front of the Earth between the sun and the Earth was very minimal. Because, see, these, this, this instrument is all color-coded. So a very, very low form of energy is blue. A very high form of energy would be naturally red, orange, and then you have this aqua blue. And this aqua blue is kind of the normal. Well, everything that we were seeing was, you know, it was kind of in the red as meaning you know, it was bad. And once again, the solar winds came from the sun. They just basically collapsed the entire magnetosphere. And then those winds got sucked around to the back side of the earth. Now, during this event, the daytime part of the Earth, as it was in its rotation, was on the daytime side. So all of the people that were actually, you know, sleeping and on the nighttime side of the Earth, uh, they were getting hit with this radiation and these solar winds. But this energy anomaly was still way behind us. Now, there's no way to judge or measure that distance. Now, one thing I want to add is a planet that is very highly magnetized. It can be tens of millions of miles away and affect the Earth's magnetosphere in that way. Now, we had this event, I believe, in April of this year, a collapse, and I believe another one in June. And now we have these back-to-back -back in October. Now, I wish there was a way for me to say yes, 100%. That was a planet, that was a star, uh, that was something. But there's just a few ways that this energy can collapse our magnetosphere like that. Okay. And um, Well, let me ask we you this. By so these things, what is happening is not something that we are accustomed to. This is new. It's just now they're happening more frequent, right? Uh, that's correct. Now, there, you know, there have been instances where... The magnetosphere has taken, you know, taken a fall. But uh, since I've been involved in uh, the Planet X community, this is the first time that I have seen a back-to-back -back collapse almost at the same time on two different days. And, I, and I'm just, I'm just leading that into some kind of an, some kind of an orbit, because naturally a planet would be in the same place at the same time. If it's orbiting something or getting closer, you see what I'm saying? So that was kind of, um, of kind of odd. If it happens again in the middle of the night tonight, um, I would say we definitely have something to pay even more closer attention to. Okay. Now, is for people that are really unfamiliar uh, with what we're talking about, visually, did we see anything on Earth um, do anything in an odd way that would have stood out to be like, hey, I've never seen that happen before. Um, or uh, you mean as far as looking up in the sky and seeing it? Well, that or or possibly maybe, I don't know, uh, some sort of magnetic shift or I really don't know what I'm asking, but I mean, is there any visual or, or, or anything audio that we would have heard? Uh, um, as far as as far as visual, probably not. Okay, so basically, because remember, this is this is just this is just a, a very high burst of of energy, solar energy. 
Okay. And it's and it's just depleting our magnetic field, and there's not really anything visually that 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 we can spot just by by seeing it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just listened to part two of this live radio broadcast. Stay tuned and listen I'd to, like to part thank three. all of our Nibiru watchers. You guys do a fantastic job. Would also like to thank you for your loyal subscribership. You can continue to email your photographs and your video to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky.